Hey folks, it's Brian. It's time for Jeep video number 59. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do some just routine maintenance to the engine. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the oil filter because it's easy to get to right now. Uh, I'm going to put spark plugs in and I'm going to put the air filter in. And this is just housekeeping stuff. I figured I'd go ahead and do a video. I don't know how this would help you. You shouldn't be working on a vehicle if you can't change an oil filter and you sure as hell shouldn't have the engine out. But I'm going to at least cover this because this is a video blog and this series is about restoring and rebuilding this Jeep from salvage to on the road. And we're really close to being on the road at the point uh, where we start changing oil filters. Now, if you haven't seen it previously, this is a Fumoto quick change valve. Uh, I know there's some haters out there that are riding their armchairs around their 4x4 living room that will tell me why this won't work. Fuck you. I don't really care. Um, these are approved by Caterpillar and Cummins, so if it'll work in heavy-duty diesel, which it does just fine, it'll work just fine in this little 4-liter four, four gasser. So, uh, without further ado, and now that I've insulted a bunch of people watching my video, yeah, I don't really care. Uh, you can let me know what you think in the comments. Um, uh, because I'm sure to piss off even more of you. Um, remember to subscribe, like, hit the bell icon so that you find out when I release new videos, and check out the playlist because I do everything by playlists. Now, <laughs> just like there's a bunch of religions, there's a bunch of people who believe in different brands of oil filters. And I happen to like Fram. I've been using them for years. Uh, they always serve me well. And I know there's people who tell, oh, it's got cardboard in it, it's got ground up liberals, it's got Fox News inside. It still filters oil, okay? I actually do oil analysis on all my oil changes, so I send the oil that comes out of the engine in, I send a little sample off to Blackstone Labs, and I find out what's going on in my engine. Are there pieces of the bearings in the oil? What's the flash point of the oil? How broken down is the oil? How, how far am I pushing the oil? And you know what? These filters work just fine if you stick to the factory oil change intervals or less, which is what I think you should be doing. So, at any rate, I'm going to continue to do what works for me. You do what works for you. If you hate Fram, that's on you. Um, Fram is owned by Honeywell. Yeah, a small company you may have never heard of. Uh, and Honeywell generally does a pretty good job on their engineering. So, uh, this is a Valvoline filter in here. Uh, it was installed by whatever quickie change place put it on. Uh, it looks like it's a, a little bit harder to remove than I expected. Ah, that's too fucking hard. It should not be that difficult to remove one of these. So, let me see if I've got a filter wrench that will fit that. And it's worth noting that the Fram filter is much larger than this little tiny ass uh, quickie change filter. All right, I might have I think that'll be made to work. But first, a word from our sponsors. Captain, make it fit. <clears throat> that is way too tight. Let me go get rid of this, I'll be right back. All right, so I need a little bit of oil to lubricate this gasket, and then we're just gonna spin it on, and that's enough. It doesn't need to be so tight that you require uh, a wrench. In fact, that's all the tightness it's gonna get. 
So that part's done. Now let's flip the engine over. One of the nice things about having the engine on an oil uh, uh, stand is that it's really easy to flip it over. And unfortunately, I've been collecting oil in the breather case, so now it's dribbling down the side of the engine. So it's time to remove the spark plugs. They are, um, I don't know how old these are. I just know that they're a lot easier to get to right now than they will be later. So um, I don't think there should be any oil on that, but this engine isn't really done and I broke one off at some point. I'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, so we got one pesky spark plug down there. Let me see if I can reach it with these. Nope. Uh, it's loose, I just can't reach it with my fingers. There we go. back with some NGK uh, spark plugs. These are the stock ones. Um, so calls for 18 to 25 foot pounds. Uh, we will verify the torque setting in the manual. Um, they are pre-gapped. And they come with a pr protective cover, so they should not be necessary to re-gap. Re Interestingly, these are the plugs that were in here before, so they're good for 30,000 miles, um, and I have no idea how long these plugs have been in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and change them because they're only a couple hours piece. Interesting, uh, the other ones had cardboard sleeves, these have plastic sleeves.
All right, so that's in. Uh, let me find the torque settings and we'll get these torqued down. Okay, so uh, I went and looked in the factory manual. Um, you've got to go to the engine section and then to torque specifications. And for the four liter, it's 27 foot pounds. Um, there's a lot of bullshit online, so I really encourage you to look this up and know it for your engine. Um, the four cylinder is 13 foot pounds according to the factory service manual. And there's a lot of people online that will tell you much different numbers. So anyway, I've got a torque wrench and I'm set to 27 foot pounds. Well, apparently that is not the right size. So let me, let me solve the size of the uh, socket issue. I'm gonna take one of these out so I can figure out what size it actually is, and then I'll be back in just a minute. I thought this was weird that this size was the one that was working. No, that's way not the right size. All right, let me fix this. All right, these are 5 8 um, socket. Check all these one more time. Okay. All right, so uh, it's probably never going to be any easier to get to this. I don't particularly care for this design. Um, and this is filthy, 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 filthy. It needs to go away. So I bought a mall brand. I'm not super picky about my air filters, but that's a whole lot cleaner. Um, pick some of the junk out. I don't I really don't like to see all that dirt in there, but it is what it is. It's a Jeep. And then this goes here. It's just a shitty design. All right, so that's all there is to that. So this is a little bit of preventative maintenance, easy cheesy. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully this helps somebody out with their Project Jeep. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, remember to let me know what you think in the comments. And, uh, you know, remember to subscribe, like, hit the alert button.